Greetings, welcome to another day of AutoForge development. Today, we've been working, well actually the last few days, we've been working on the render system and trying to clean it up. I wrote all of the render system code about two years ago, whenever I was working on Project Dig. At that point, I had never used BGF, BGFX before. I didn't really know what I was doing. And I was just kind of feeling my way through it. And we ended up with um, some code that was functional, but extremely ugly and not optimized whatsoever. So I wanted to just take some time to clean things up before moving forward with the rest of the game and really trying to push on the, the gameplay side of things. So... I have been doing that the last few days, and I was just going to show you kind of the results here. What well, we have, um, the first, like, there's a lot of stuff we've changed, and I probably should pull up, like, some diff here, but the biggest change, I would say, overall, is that we have moved to using instances for our sprites, and... So I'll just kind of go over that workflow and probably keep it to that because I've probably spent uh, 20 hours working on all of this in the last like three days. And so there's a lot to go over, but we'll keep it short. Um, so the first thing is that we, so we're using BGFX and they they have they support instancing uh instancing is where you provide a template vertex buffer and a template index buffer and then a bunch of instance data and the render backend will like basically uh render each instance using that template data that you provided and it makes it so that you don't have to, you know, calculate all of the vertices and indices, uh, which is what we were doing before. And so now we just have to um, populate our instance data. So now what we are doing is we have this uh, sprites array that's, you know, it's fixed array and we reuse this. So it's really just a pool of Sprite instance data that is being used every single uh, draw layer. And we populate it with all of the instance data, which includes the UV, the color, the position, origin, etc. You can see all of it right here. So we just populate that. And then and we actually do that in a few places. We do that when we are drawing a sprite, when we are drawing a render component uh, with the transform, and also whenever we are drawing vertex data. And then if we go all the way down to where we are uh, submitting the layer, which is right here, when we uh, want to draw a sprites, we check to see if there are any sprites and if there are, then the first thing we do is we sort them. And so what we're trying to do here is batch up the sprites by the group. So each group needs its own texture, or it has its own texture, and also its own shader. So if they differ at all, then they will be batched differently. And so we, we do a lot of setup here where we, we sort them by group, and then we count how many item or sprites are in each group and then we iterate through or we just say while the index is less than the sprite count and we actually can get rid of this code i i've realized that uh yesterday oh wait no 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 never mind it was somewhere else that we could get rid of it um so we just have to look at the sprite group for this i think that's the only thing we use for this the sprite um and so we we check to see if like our group changed if if our group changed that means we need to do a new batch so that it really means that there's a new uh, texture being used or a new uh, 
shader. And I was actually told by a Twitch viewer that we can um, do texture arrays inside of our shader. So we could technically use multiple textures as well, which means we could batch um, even more. Um, and so we get the available instance data buffer, which is our batch count. So that might not be all of the items within our group. So we have to keep trying until we, you know, use up all of the group. And then we do this really cool thing where we just copy over all of our Sprite instance data to our instance buffer. And then we um, submit the batch and that's pretty much it. Um, and then on the shaders side, we have this where we are applying, this is our instance data. It's being passed into this idata zero, one, two, three, which we set up in our varying def. And then we pull out like our rotation and we apply our SRT essentially to the position of the vertex. And from all of that, we're able to calculate, you know, the correct data, the GL position, the color and the texture coordinate. Yeah, so huge shout out to uh, fake Perry for helping so much. Uh, he he saved me a ton of time and really helped me learn how to do this. And I am considering like doing some other sort of BGFX tutorial walkthrough type of videos, maybe more in depth than this. Uh, if anyone is interested in that sort of thing, I know there's not a lot out there because, you know, bef on the other side, at the beginning of working on this, I was trying to learn how to do this stuff and I had no idea. And so I was looking for it. There's not a lot out there. So maybe I could help fix that at least a little bit. So I hope that this uh, video was useful, interesting to you. Uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you would be interested in some more in-depth BGFX videos. And I might put something together. So yeah, um, we can try running it before I, I close off here. I may have broken something. We'll see here. Nope, it looks good. Okay, awesome. Um, there was a change I had made and I wasn't sure if it was going to work, but it looks like it does. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, we can see that this is rendering with the instancing. We have uh, these plants being rotated and colored um, every single frame and they have the origin set at the bottom so that was like the big thing I was testing there and um, yeah so there's a bunch of other work that we did but we won't get into that because this video is so long so yeah um, let me know if you would like some more in-depth videos and I'll see you guys next time have a good one